everyone. Uh, like Jesse said, my name is Danielle. I'm uh, an educator here at Ripley's Aquarium of Canada in Toronto, and I'm here to tell you all about one of our tanks, the Pacific Kelp Forest. So as you can see, we do have a couple divers in this tank. They are currently feeding all of the fish. Um, I believe today they're getting a big variety of different seafood, like squid, peeplin, um, some hake in there as well. As you can see, they're very excited to see our diver who kind of just broadcasts or kind of throws it into the water near their mouths and then they can kind of um, get the food that they want. Um, a little bit about this tank. So this is our third largest tank again called the Pacific Kelp Forest. It's There's about 420,000 liters of water in this tank. So I'm gonna just take a few steps back just so you can maybe see how large this tank is, if it can even fit in my screen. So there's a big view. So it's our third largest tank and it is our deepest tank, about 24 feet, or if you can imagine a big yellow school bus turned on its side, it could actually fit. Uh, right here in this tank. Um, and this is salt water. It's a very cold. It's one, it's about our second coldest tank around 11 degrees. So as you can see our divers, when they're diving in this tank, they wanna make sure they have the right gear. So this is one of our divers here. He has gloves on, he has a hood, and he has a very thick wetsuit and that'll keep him nice and warm while he's in this tank uh, feeding the fish. Now, like Jesse said too, you can find this kelp forest habitat right here in Canada. We have the, the second largest kelp forest on our west coast in British Columbia. Um, the largest one being in, in the United States, uh, California. And it's a very, very important habitat to many, many species. As you can see, we have lots of different fish uh, living in this habitat here. So I'm gonna talk about a few of them. So. Most of the fish you're seeing here are different species of rockfish. Um, so who do we have? We have the black rockfish here. The orange ones are canary rockfish. And these fish usually are just found kind of motionless either on the bottom or in the water column. And that's kind of how they got their name rockfish. They kind of just sit around looking like rocks. And they do this for a couple reasons. So like I said before, this tank is very cold, about 11 degrees. So these fish want to try and conserve their energy. They don't want to be wasting uh, their energy by swimming around too much. And it's also kind of a good form of uh, protection, they kind of camouflage and look like a rock. So that might be a way to protect themselves from predators in the wild. Now a fun fact about rockfish, they're known to live a very, very long time, up to about 200 years even, which is crazy for a fish, but also can pose some problems for this fish um, when it comes to fishing. So since they live so long, they don't um, mature or start having their fish babies until later in their life, around 35 years. So that means they're susceptible to overfishing. So if we're fishing them before they can have their babies, then they're not gonna be able to uh, reproduce and sustain their population. So we have to be careful when we're fishing for some types of fish species. Some other stars, some other fish in this tank, you can see this flat fish swimming by our diver there. So we have some starry flounders, and I believe we also have some sole in this tank, which are another type of flat fish. So if you see a fish that's swimming sideways, there's one going by. Um, kind of lots of people think they're stingrays, but these are uh, flat fish. And believe it or not, when these fish are born, they start upright, just like the rockfish. And once they grow up and go through uh, puberty, they actually turn sideways and their eye migrates across their forehead to one side, which is pretty, pretty cool. And again, just like the rockfish, this, this might be a good adaptation or advantage um, when it comes to protection and camouflaging. So they can uh, easily sit at the bottom or lay at the bottom of uh, the ocean and they blend into the sand, but they have both eyes on the lookout. Now, who else do we have in this tank? So we have our rockfish, we have our flatfish, we also have um, our sable fish, which is that large kind of white gray fish that just swam by our diver. I know they get very friendly with the divers. 
Now, we also have some little tiny anemones here at the bottom. If you can see those pink and white uh, structures, there's strawberry anemones um, down there. And there's one other thing other than fish that I want to talk about that's very, very important in this habitat. It is all this green stuff called kelp. Now, kelp is very, very important for many different reasons. It's um, not only a habitat, which for these fish um, is the purpose of the kelp, so it gives them a place to hide and stay protected. It's also food, and it also produces a lot of our oxygen. So if you take two big deep breaths in, that second breath most likely came from um, organisms living in the ocean. So just like we get our oxygen um, from plants on, on land, this kelp provides a lot of the oxygen for the animals in the water. It, um, so habitat, food, and oxygen, three very important things. Now, our kelp here at the aquarium is artificial. It is fake. And that is because there's a couple different reasons. In ideal conditions, it's a very, very fast growing. It can grow about 60 centimeters in one day. So we, we would need divers and they're constantly cutting it and that's just too much work. And we are also an indoor aquarium and this kelp or algae, it needs sunlight to grow just like plants do. So that's a little bit tricky being inside. So um, just to make it easier for everyone, it is artificial. But we don't need to worry because as you can see, our divers are in there feeding the fish. They're carnivores, they like to eat other fish. So they're not gonna try and eat this kelp. It is purely for um, habitat and protection. But you guys surprisingly might have eaten kelp today. So if you brushed your teeth this morning, which I hope you did, you would have had some kelp in your toothpaste. If you enjoy ice cream or chocolate milk or ketchup, all these items have kelp in it, believe it or not. Um, not to worry, it is good for you. Uh, we like to use it as a thickening agent in uh, some of our food and beauty products. So kelp is very important to us as well as uh, all these fish that we see here. But unfortunately, there are things um, that can be um, hurting our kelp forests, putting them in danger and making life for these animals a little bit harder in the wild. So kelp forests are found on um, near the coast. So there is um, threats from garbage and pollution um, coming from our coastlines that gets into these kelp uh, habitats, making it a non-suitable habitat for these animals. Even things like oil spills, which will block the top layer of water and that kelp cannot reach the sunlight to grow and get, get its energy. Um, so all these different issues do have an effect, kind of a chain reaction, because without the kelp forest, all these different fish that we took a, took a look at um, would no longer have a habitat and it's no longer a suitable place to live. So we want to make sure we are doing what we can to protect our kelp forests and make sure that they stick around for all those good reasons we talked about, the shelter, the food, and the oxygen that they create for these animals. So a few things that we can be doing, even if we don't live near the kelp forest, um, is just to make sure we're not littering, we're putting our garbage in the proper space, and more importantly, or even better, we can focus on reducing our waste. So there are many great options available for doing that. You can pack your lunches in reusable containers, bring your water in your reusable water bottle. Simple little things like that can make a huge difference in the amount of waste that we have that we're producing. Um, another thing you can do is shoreline cleanups or schoolyard cleanups. Just get out there. Um, as long as it's safe with your adults, you can um, pick up the garbage that's out there and make sure it gets in the right uh, right bin, so recycling or the green bin, just to make our earth a little bit cleaner. Um, and another thing you can do is educate yourself. So it's all great you guys are listening today. Um, I encourage you to keep doing your research on the ocean and our environment and finding new ways that we can help make sure that we protect all these beautiful ecosystems like the kelp forest.